27, uh, we have Paul telling us the importance of having a winning mindset. A winning mindset. Uh, there's a, a winning mindset or mentality, and there's a losing mindset or mentality. And uh, just because you're a Christian, just because you're a believer, doesn't mean you're automatically going to be a, uh, have a winning mindset. Uh, it ought to be. We as a people of God have all the reasons in all the world to be upbeat and positive, have a winning mindset. But it doesn't mean that just because you're a child of God, you're going to have this winning mindset and this winning attitude and this upbeat uh, disposition that you have. It's going to be something that you're going to have to allow God to grow in us as we desire to draw closer to you. And I've been told the message this morning, winning within, winning within with a winning mindset. Winning within with a mini mindset, with a winning mindset. Your mindset is simply a collection of the most dominant thoughts in your life at that given moment. Whatever your dominant thoughts are, that's your mindset. And so uh, if your dominant thought system at the moment is, is fear and anxiety and uncertainty and turmoil and all the, uh, the uneasiness of our world, then that's going to be your mindset. And you're going to view everything in life through the prism or through the, the viewpoint of those glasses of, uh, of that mindset. Uh, if your focus oh, is God's good and boy, God's in control and, and uh, nothing catches God by surprise, you know, your mindset is focused on those dominant thoughts, then guess what? You're going to have much more of a winning mindset than you are a losing mindset. All of us uh, can look at one side or the other. You can look at a glass that's either half full or half empty. And it's really the mindset that you have. And well, it's half empty. And you can look at all the negatives and all the gloom and doom and all the things that are going wrong in your life. Or someone look at the same glass and say, well, it's half full. And look at all the great things that are a part of that. And be able to complement and build upon that as a result. In Proverbs chapter 4, the Bible says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And so God says you better guard your mindset because your most dominant thinking at that moment determines your mindset. Your mindset then determines the course and direction that your life goes. And so if you don't like the direction your life is going, then, then you've got to change your mindset. And it doesn't mean it changes your life situation. Uh, you still may have some worries. You still may have some fears. There still may be some circumstances in your life that you don't like that you're going through, but your mindset changes because your mindset changes that course of direction in your life begins a different course of direction. And so to excel at anything in life, uh, your primary responsibility is to cultivate a winning mentality. Uh, too many Christians, I, I, I'm afraid, have a losing mindset. They have a losing mentality. And it's just sort of like, well, we're just hanging in there. We're just doing the best we can. And we're just sort of surviving. And, and they're just sort of making, barely making it. And uh, there's no winning mindset. Uh, and in any area of your life, if you're going to excel, uh, you're going to have to have a winning mindset. As an employer, you got to have a winning mindset as a husband, a winning mindset as a parent, a winning mindset as a child of God, a winning mindset where there's not that winning mindset, then you're going to allow that negativity of the world we live in to die dominate us, and then determine, determine the course or direction that we go in our life. And so God desires for us to cultivate an I can do mentality. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things. And uh, through Christ with strength, listen, I can do all things. And he said, I can't do it. No, you won't do it because with God, you can't do it. You can come out on the bright side of life. You can come out better and not bitter. You can come out on the top side, not the bottom side. You can, but you've got to tap into God's strength and God's power to accomplish that. If you say, I just can't do it, preacher. No, you won't do it. You don't want to do it. Uh, you will not to do it because with God, we can do all things. You can keep an upbeat spirit. You can keep a winning mindset. You see, to become a winner in life, we've got to have a winning mindset. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit. Ephesians 4 23. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And so God says your mind has a spirit that needs to be renewed and you have a winning mindset spirit. You have a defeated spirit, a gloom and doom, the world's coming apart, you know, the Eeyore mentality, everything's falling apart. Or you can have that mindset where you renew the spirit of your mind. And that's where the Word of God and the preaching of the Word of God and time and with God, walking with God, is allows your spirit to be renewed, to strengthen that spirit of your mind. So you have a winning mindset as you 
you look at the challenges of life, as you look at the, the difficulties that may lie in front of you. So mindset is everything when it comes to living the abundant Christian life. Uh, it doesn't matter how talented you are. It doesn't matter how many times you go to church. It doesn't matter how much uh, adversity you face in life. If you don't have the right mindset, you're not going to go very far. You've got to have the right mindset as you live the Christian life in going in the right direction for God. And so winning is a word we all like. We like to be identified with winners. Uh, if you're a Chicago Cub fan or something, oh, well, you know, or a Green Bay Packer fan down here, uh, you know, we like to be identified with winners. And uh, none of us start off life saying, you know what, I'm going to get married so we can just have a, a losing marriage. I wanna, we're going to have some kids so we can uh, be losers as parents. And I'm going to become this so I can be a loser in this area of my life. None of us start off that way. We all start off wanting to excel, wanting to be successful in our lives. The message uh, this morning uh, is, a, is a springboard of, of a statement that was said recently that challenged me and it was such a, a, a thorough thought process uh, that went into it that I thought it's something that would be good for all of us to remind about today. The thought was this, uh, in regards to a crossroad that an individual's at, uh, in regards to accepting Christ as their Savior. And that crossroad was this, uh, the, the, the decision that I need to make, it's not an if, it's a when. It's not if I'm going to trust Christ my Savior, it's a when I'm going to trust Christ my Savior. But here's a statement that was said that caught my attention. It was such a good statement. The statement was this. He says, the decision that I'm about to make is a very important commitment, and I don't want to take that decision lightly. What's he saying? I, if I'm going to enter into this thing called Christianity, I want to su ex excel. I want to succeed. I want to, I want to make something of this. I want to give myself in this thing, and I want to just be happy in and half out. I want to get in this thing and get involved in this thing and serve God. But until that time where I'm willing to make that commitment I just am going to wait and see and have some things addressed in my life and some questions maybe that he might have that he's trying to filter through and process through. But I was impressed by that statement where he said I'm waiting. I know I'm going to, I know I'm going to trust Christ. It's not an if, if I'm going to do this. It's a when I'm going to do this. But I'm waiting to the time because I realize this is a very important decision. I appreciate that. I realize there's a commitment on my part. I don't want to just flippantly go into it. I want to enter into it. What are we saying? I want to be a success in what I'm about to do. If I'm going to do this and when I do it, I'm going to succeed. And that's a good way to do it. I respect now as much as I'd like him to trust Christ as a Savior, as much as I, I'd like him to, to accept Christ at that moment when I talk to him, I respect the position that he had that when I do it, not it, but when I do it, I want to excel. I want to succeed. There's a commitment that's tied to that. And with that thought, that winning within, with a winning mindset, I think is so important for all of us that we can learn from today. You see, mindset is everything when it comes to living the abundant Christian life. A winner's attitude has nothing to do with where you are in life at this moment of life. Uh, you can be in the worst time at all right now in your life, but if you've got a winning mindset, if you've got to excel, I'm going to excel in my life, then you can go forward and account and amount to something all because you've got that mindset that says, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to get knocked down. I'm getting back up. I'm going to get knocked down again. And say, man, tag me here. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. I'm going to excel at what I do. you got that winner's mindset. And that's what makes a difference between a major league baseball player and a minor league baseball player. You see, uh, in the minors, everyone pretty much from double A AA to triple A, all in the major leagues, uh, they have pretty much the same talent. Talent-wise, they can throw just as hard uh, in the minors as they can in the majors. Uh, they can uh, hit just as far the ball uh, in the minors as they can in the majors. And they can field and play in the fundamentals in the minor leagues as much as the majors. But the difference between those that are major league and those that are minor league is a difference of a winning mindset. They go there and say, listen, I'm going to win. And we're going to win this thing. And our team's going to win. And we have a mindset that we're going to excel at what we do. And the difference 
is in the mindset. And so the same thing in our Christian life. We can't change our circumstances. We can't change our life events. We can't change that which is dealt to us in life. But we can change the mindset that we have concerning our life situation and have a mindset that is what? That's a positive, that's a, a, a focal point, a focus on God mindset, that winning mindset that we have for God. And so a winner's attitude requires more than just positive thinking. It's not just repeating to yourself, we're going to win, we're going to win, we're going to win, we're going to win. It's not just a rally around, let's get together, we're going to win, 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 win. It's not repetitiously saying you're going to win. It's a lifestyle that is focused on Christ because Christ is the ultimate winner. He overcame death, he overcame the grave, he overcame hell, he was victorious, and he set the pace and the direction for us to live a victorious, winning mindset life. And so a winner's attitude, a winner's mindset is a way of life that's characterized by a Christ-like focus. I like to put it this way. A winner's mindset is a spiritual immune booster that will bump up your spiritual immune system uh, to a degree that will help you through the journey of life. It's a powerful booster to your spiritual immune system so that you know you're on the winning side. We sing that song. Well, I'm on the winning side. Yes, I'm on. We love to sing that song and to focus on we're on the winning side. But are you living your life as though you're on the winning side? Uh, would anyone else know that you're a winner, uh, that you're on the winning mindset, uh, winning side as a child of God? I've witnessed many different times uh, those that are in the hospital the doctor will come and they'll talk to the family and they'll gather us in a room oftentimes off the side of an ICU room or wherever the patient might be and I just sort of a private uh, little room set aside and the doctors will come in and, and they'll say to the family, we've tried everything and uh, we've done everything that we can do and we've tried this and we've done this and we've done that and we've done everything. And the doctors will often say, now it's only up to the patient to determine how determined they are to live. And it comes back to the patients and the medical professionals tell us that the patient's mere determination oftentimes to live and not die can cause them to make it through those difficult times. Apparently when the body is at a point of shut down, the bodily organs are being compromised by the shadow of death, but that winner's attitude can energize that body and make the difference between life and death. Why? Because they want to live and they're determined to live and nothing's going to stop them. And they're going to do whatever it takes to get out of that bed and whatever it takes to walk again and whatever it takes to live again. There's that mindset to get up and go where other times others just sort of give up and say, well, what's the use? Maybe a leg gets amputated. And they say, well, you know, I, I can't do anything in my life. And, but we're challenged to watch these that compete in these Special Olympics. And we watch these that put on their prosthetic limbs. And boy, they're running down a track. Or they're competing in some sport. Or they got their wheelchairs. And they're playing, you know, all the different things. What they got? These are those that have overcome some obstacles of life. But there's a mindset they have. They're not going to let it hold them down. They're not going to lie to discourage them and give up and despair and defeat. They say, I'm not going to turn back. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep moving forward. The Bible says, and Jesus said to him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. In other words, the Lord wants us to pray with a winning mindset. Don't pray, well, I, I know, Lord, you're probably not going to answer this prayer, but I'll go ahead and pray it anyway, because you say pray. He said, pray believing. Pray believing. What's say? Pray with a winning mindset. Lord, I know you can do this. I know you're looking forward, and this would be a great way to honor you and to magnify you and to glorify you. And God said, if you believe, then pray with that heart of belief. Pray with a winning mindset. And God says, you'll see some mountains move, and you'll see some miracles done, but you've got to believe. There's got to be that winning mindset. But so often we don't approach God with a winning mindset. We go to God's well. You know, God, I know this is a big prayer, and it's probably, you know, too late to ask you for, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you anyway, because preacher said to pray about it, and I don't really think it's going to happen anyway, but here it is. No wonder we don't get a lot of our prayers answered. We don't pray believing with that mindset that God will, and God is able, and God is able to do exceeding abundantly about what we could ever ask or hope or imagine. God is that God that God wants to serve as a winning mind says we serve God. And so the Lord is saying here, if you can believe that Christ could do for him what he's requesting to be done, 
than it is possible. Uh, there's no uh, incidentals in our life. Uh, God's saying here, know ye not that he which runs the race, verse 24, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. What's he saying? We should live your life in this race of life to win with the mindset to win and to strive that you're going to win. Not just cross the finish line, not just finish a race, but live your life to win in your marriage, to win as a parent, to win as a Christian. Live with the desire not just to make it another day, but to win as you go through this Christian life. Winners become winners because they determine to be winners. In other words, if you're going to run, run to win. One of the things that I'm disappointed with in our sporting uh, venue nowadays versus when I was growing up and t-ball and little league and all the way up through. Uh, when I was growing up, there was only one winning team and all the other teams were losing teams. And uh, there was a first place and uh, now everyone gets a participation trophy and now everybody, you know, we don't want to hurt somebody's ego and uh, affect somebody's psyche and, and uh, you know, we got to teach everybody, you know, that everybody, you know, we can't win and lose and we're all winners and that's not life. Listen, someone always wins and someone always loses and we got to teach the young people today that, listen, we strive to win and we strive hard to win and uh, if we lose, then we're a fair loser, we're a good loser, but we strive. Listen, I don't like losing. I like to win, but when the game is over and I've done the best I could do, then I can go shake the opponent's hand and says, good job, and uh, I'll learn from the mistakes I made. I'll learn from the challenges that I had. But uh, listen, uh, we've got to raise up. We've got a generation today that doesn't know how to lose. They don't know how to lose because they don't even know how to win as a result. And so on April 17th of this year, the 26.2 mile Boston Marathon uh, will be run. Many uh, with no intention of ever winning the race. There'll be over 25,000 that'll enlist in the race this year, the Boston Marathon. And uh, many of those will never plan uh, to win the race. Many of those will never even plan to finish the race. Many will just plan to run a few miles and get their t-shirt that said, I ran the Boston Marathon. And uh, they'll have their t-shirt that will be given to them. Some have their goal of just to finish a race, but no desire to win the race. And they don't mind. They only want to say they finish a race. And others are determined to win the race. And how is it in your life? Do you want to just finish a race and say, I'm making it to heaven. Praise the Lord. Or do you want to finish this race and say, you know what? If I'm going to get in this thing as a Christian, I want to be the best that I can be with God's help and God's strength and God's power to get committed, to get all in and to serve God with all that I've got. I want to finish. And I'm going to finish. I want to be first. Now, I may not be first. I'm going to run as though first place is on my mind. I'm going to be the best wife I can be. I'm going to be the best husband I can be, the best mom I can be, the best dad I can be, the best servant of God I can be. I'm going to run to be the first that I can cross that finish line. Now, that's between God and, and yourself, where you finish in the, the race of life. But may I say, we ought to run with a desire. Run so that you may what? That you obtain. Listen, you're going to put all the effort to live the Christian life. Then I like that answer that man gave. He said, you know what, if I'm going to do, when I do this, I realize there's a commitment I've got to make. I realize there's, a, there's some, some the decision I'm going to have to make. I realize this, I'm going to get in this race. I want to run well. I want to finish well. I want to do it right. And here's the Christians today that we're so prone to losing. We have no desire to excel and to win. And we just sort of throw down our arms. We just sort of give up. And say, well, it's just sort of hard to serve God. I uh, give us some men and ladies of God that are willing to stand up and stand strong in their faith and be able to be steadfast in what they believe in and do right because the winning mindset, we're on the winning side. We're on the winning side. We're not on the losing side. Now, we may not be in the majority. That's obvious. We're in the remnant. That's obvious. Uh, God says, though, He's always used a remnant to accomplish His purpose. God has never had a majority. If we're waiting for the majority to show up so we can enlist, uh, there has never been a majority that was a follower of Christ. It was always a remnant of a group, a minority of a group. But with God at the helm and God at the center of our lives, we can overcome and we can win. We can be victorious with God's strength and God's power in our lives. And so when you're missing uh, here in the Christian life, uh, this sense of fulfillment God wants you to have, these are strong words he says. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man 
him, that thou visit him, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with what? Glory and honor. Glory and honor. God did not create us to be losers. God did not create us to be a, a defeatist and oh I, can, I can't do it. I can't overcome that. And I'll never accomplish that. And God will never answer that prayer. No, God created us with glory and honor to excel and have a winning mindset as a child of God. Now that doesn't mean that we're to adopt a worldly cutthroat uh, attitude to where we're trying to undermine everyone that's in our way and chop them down and get them out of the way and move forward in our uh, pursuit of victory and pursuit of success because God's concept of winning is different than the world's concept. First of all, God's concept is not uh, inclusive, it's exclusive. God's winning concept is exclusive. There's room at the top for everyone to be a winner. In the world's view, it's only one on the top, and everybody else is below. But in God's economy, everyone has the opportunity to be on the, on the top side, to be a winner uh, in your life. You know why you can? Because I'm not racing against you. You're not racing against me. Paul said, I, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. I finished my course that was set before me. Listen, you've got a race that you're running, and that's your race against yourself and your potential and the opportunities that God gives you. I'm not running against you, and you're not running against him. You're running against yourself, and you can be on the top side in the victory that God has for you in your life. So God's uh, desire of uh, winning is not inclusive, it's exclusive. You see, secondly, instead of dominating people, godly winners dominate their circumstances. The world dominates people. God dominates circumstances. Winning with God's people dominates circumstances. Why? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. God's winners realize that God doesn't promise them dominion over other people. God promises you dominion over your problems. God promises a victory over your situation. God promises a victory over our hardships and our trials. You can, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are victorious in Christ, not to overcome someone, but to overcome the problems that we face. And what is it that pulls us down? Problems. Problems. Oh, boy, it's just been real tough. Been a hard year already this year. It's been really, really rough. Boy, we've been through a lot this year. A lot of circumstances, a lot of situations. A winner in God's family is one that overcomes those trials, overcomes those troubles, overcomes those problems. He's not there to overpower people. He's there to overpower in God's strength the problems and situations that comes into their life. See, it's those forces of circumstances the real winner puts under his feet. God's concept of winning is good news for everybody. Why? Because I'm going to overcome my, my problems. You're going to overcome your problems. And together we can stand side by side as winners because we're not competing against each other. The Bible says you're foolish. We're foolish to compare ourselves with each other. Because one of two things will happen, they're not good. Number one, I'll become proud because I'm so much better than you are. Or I'll become so, uh, you know, uh, defeated because you're so much better than I. Why even try? So if I'm comparing, if we're comparing with each other, we're always prone to do one of the extreme or the other. Oh, I'm better than them. I'm a better this. I'm a better that. So listen, I, I allow pride to get in. And so therefore, if pride's there, I'm not going to grow at all. Or if I become so self introverted and say, well, I can never be like that. I can never achieve what you do. I can never accomplish what you're accomplishing. Then now I'm on the other spectrum. And so they're both of these. So the battle is what? It's me and my life and the circumstances that are placed in front of me to prevent me from getting to the next step. And I'm going to win. I'm a winning mindset. A just man, the Bible says, how many times he fall? Seven times. And he does what? He gets up. You're not a failure when you fall. You're a failure when you fail to get up after the problems knock you down, after the hardships knock you down. Get up today. Be a winning mindset. Have a success mindset in your heart. Say, listen, I've been knocked down, but I'm not staying down. I'm getting up. I'm going to be better the next time because of what I've learned from the mistakes of the past, and I'm going to move forward. You get knocked down. You get to be a good loser. Get up. And say, so I'm not doing that again. I'm not acting that way again. I'm not losing my temper that way again. I'm not behaving that way again. I'm not doing it that way again. And you rebuild your life, and you make some changes in your life. If you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting what you've always gotten. I don't know why my life doesn't change. Well, you've got you to change what you're doing to get something different. 
Some of you might be in a second or third marriage, and if you bring in the same baggage that you brought, that you, that you, the, the challenges you had in the first marriage, and you bring those same challenges uh, to the second marriage, uh, guess what? You're going to have the same defeat. You're going to have the same uh, frustration. You're going to have the same uh, hurt, the same anxiety. But if you can take those things that, that you don't want to bring into this next relationship and, and, and leave those things behind and say, we're going to be, be better because of this and learn from some of the mistakes I made yesterday and move forward in spite of some of the failings of yesterday then you'll be able to grow in those areas you see God wants us to be a successful people and God's concept of winning is a good news for everybody it's not just a man saying well there's only two of us that can win here today no all of us can be winners you can be a winner today and you don't have to tear someone else down because they're beyond you or better than you or more spiritual than you that's that's their race they're running that's their journey they're running. We're all different Christians. We're all different places in our life. Some's one talent, some's two talents, some's three talents, some five, some ten, ten talents. It doesn't matter how many talents you have, but are you using what talents you have? If you're not using those talents you have, then, then you're not winning. You don't have that winning mindset. Don't allow others to discourage you and don't allow others to cause you to become uh, more proud than maybe you ought to be. Take your Bibles. Paul was a great man. We just got a few moments. Paul was a great man that had a winning mindset. Uh, he was a winner. And, and I think a lot of times uh, we see this uh, in, the, in the heart of, and I don't know if it's maybe uh, m m part of sports uh, with my background or, or maybe just, uh, I don't know what it is, but, but, but I, I've got that winning mindset and uh, I don't, I don't want to give up and quit and throw in the towel. You may have to make some adjustments. You may have to make some changes in your life. You may have to make some uh, you know, the different um, uh, adjustments along the journey of life. But listen, we want to win. You want to win in your marriage and have a great marriage. You want to win in your parents and have a great children. You want to win in your walk with God to have a great walk with God. And it doesn't mean you're going to succeed every bit of the way, every step of the way. But you want to win. And when you're knocked down, you get knocked down. Get back up. Get back up. Get back up. And be better today than you were yesterday. Look what the Bible says in Philippians chapter number 3. And Paul uh, gives us in Philippians a great challenge of, of success and how to have a winning mindset uh, concerning the Word of God that's given the entire book of Philippians. But we'll look at just a couple of verses here to this morning. Philippians chapter 3, look what it says in verse number 12. He says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He said, I've not arrived. I've got a long ways to go. It doesn't matter how long you've been married, you, you, you've not arrived as a, as a spouse. It doesn't matter how many children you have, you've not arrived as a parent yet. It doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian, you've not yet apprehended. You've not yet arrived. Uh, and in fact, the longer I'm married, the more I realize how much I need to improve as a husband. The longer I've been a parent, the more I need to realize I, how I realize how much of a parent I need to improve on. And I think we find that as we get older in life. But Paul said, I, I count not myself. I've not arrived. I've not apprehended. Any, I've not reached any level that I should be at. But this one thing I do. Now, there's something you have to do. And he narrows it down to one thing. You ever get to the point where you say, you know, i got so much to do on my plate, so much to do on my schedule. There's no, no way I can get everything done. Paul said, let's keep it simple. Let's get it down to the one thing you need to do. If I'm going to have a winning mindset, God says, here's what i got to do. This one thing, what? I do forgetting those things which are behind. So the first step of having a winning mindset is, number one, realize I've not arrived. See, if I think I've arrived, then I'm not going to continue improving myself. But if, I'm, if I, I've got a long ways to go as a husband, I've got a long ways to go as a pastor, I've got a long ways to go as a Christian, I've got a long ways to go as a dad, I've got a long ways, you know, so if we look at our lives, I, I'm far from what I ought to be. Then God says, here's what I want, this one thing I want you to do, it requires action. Do, what is it? Forget. Forget the past. See, many of us are prevented from moving forward today because of the ball and chain of yesterday. We're not forgetting the yesterday. We're not forgetting the mistakes of yesterday. We're not forgetting the failings of yesterday. You know, we can look back and say, you know what, boy, I wish I could redo some of those things. You can't. I can't. Well, if I know now what I knew then, boy, I would have done it different. But that doesn't do us any good back then because we didn't know it back then. So God says there's one thing you've got to do. If we have a winning mindset, I can't be a winner and have a winning mindset if I'm always looking back at the past. Now, the past could be what? The good old days, we remember. Those good old days. Oh, yeah, those were the good old days. And uh, the good old days are never as good as you remember them. 
They're never as good as you remember them. And, uh, and then the th main thing we look back on is what? All of our imperfections. Man, I dropped the ball there. Oh, boy, I was selfish there. And oh, boy, I, was, I, was, I wasn't a good parent there. And oh, boy, I wasn't a good spouse there. And oh, man, I really messed up there. I was so selfish there. And oh, boy. And you look back, and Satan has a way of bringing your past into your presence and beating you up. And we're our own worst enemy because God says this is one thing you've got to do. What's your resolution for this year? What are you going to do? And you set all your goals. How about, well, God says this one thing I do. I've got to forget some things. I'm going to forget some things. I'm going to forget maybe all my successes, because that's holding me back. But mostly I've got to forget all my failings, because that's holding me back. All the regrets, all the things I wish I could have done differently. I wish I wouldn't have said that, or I wish I would have said that. I wish I would have done this, or I wish I wouldn't have done that. If I would have known then, I would have done it differently, what I know now. And I, I, but I can't go back. And so what's the devil do? He brings your past in your present to prevent you from having a winning mindset from here forward. Because he wants to remind you what a loser you are. And he's good at it. And he'll bring up all the things that you did, all the mistakes that we've done, all the things that we dropped the ball in. He's going to say, you're a loser. And you know what? Everything he's saying is true. We are losers. Because we were a jerk when we acted that way, and we were an idiot when we did that. We were a, you know, and we were a loser. But I can't go back and fix it. And you can't go back and fix it. And so you can allow the devil to continue to remind you of how bad and how much of a loser you are and convince you that you're a loser from here forward. Or Paul says, now remember Paul, he was the one that arrested Christians. Remember Paul, Saul, before he became the road to Damascus, he was the one that would go into church and arrest Christians, take them back and send them to the lion's den and martyr them and for sport. You know, the Romans would come in, they watch the Christians get, you know, devoured by the lions and stuff. That's his job. He would come in and capture Christians. He got saved. But he had a lot of things in his baggage in yesterday that Satan could use. Boy, you're a loser. You arrested these very people that you're identifying with. You, arrest, you, know, you, you put them in jail and you got them killed and you're a loser. But he said, this one thing I've got to do, I've got to forget the things that are in the past. You may have some things in your closets in the past that Satan doesn't want you to forget about. May I encourage you today, if you're going to have a winning mindset, you've got to take that to the cross and say, dear Jesus, I'm, I, I, I've dealt with this once and for all and I'm going to do it one more time, but Lord, I am so sorry I did that. I acted that way, and that wasn't right. I'm sorry. I, I, if I could go back and undo it, I would do it, but I can't. And I'm sorry. And maybe you need to write today's date. And I tell folks this so often. Put the day, victory day, and put the date. And then you go out and you burn all those things that you write down of where you failed in this area as a wife, and you failed in this way as a mom, and you failed in this area as a daughter, and you failed in this area as a son, and you failed in this area as a, you know, you write all the areas that the devil reminds you you're a failure. And you write today's date, the day, and you put the date, you burn it. And you take a few of those ashes, and you put them in a little baggie, and you put them in that baggie, and whenever the devil comes back to try to bring back your past, bring it to your present, you pull that out of your Bible and say, Satan, you get out of here. Because on this day was my V-Day. And I'm not a loser. It's forgiven. It's under the blood. I'm a new person in Christ. Old things are passed away and all things become new. You need some transitional point because Satan is a master at being what? An accuser of the brethren. And when he accuses us, his accusations are always accurate. They're always true. But the one thing he doesn't deal with is that they're forgiven. They're forgiven. They're under the blood. And what God forgives, he forgives. And so the verse says, one thing I do. I'm gonna, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. What's the thing you're gonna do this year? I got to forget the things that are behind. So why? What's the next verse? And then reaching forth under those things which are before. Reaching for. So you got, I gotta forget the behind, the past. And then I've got to strive and look forward at, with anticipation and hope and, 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 you know, anticipation, looking forward with anticipation. Look at the next verse. And then it says, I press toward the mark 
for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark. And uh, we'll, the, the verse uh, highlights in another verse here in, in um, uh, chapter number one. We'll, we'll see it a few verses here. But that pressing is a reaching forward as a runner, you know, crosses the finish line. You'll see them sometimes just stretch out as far as they can. They, they get out in front of the other person. They're pressing. They're getting as far out as they can. And God said, I want you to have that mindset. A winning mindset. You're running to win, but you're not going to win if you're always thinking about how much of a loser you are. And that failed relationship, and that failed this, and that failed that, and that failed business, and that failed this, and that failed that. And Satan will bring it all back in your life. You're a failure. You're a loser. You're a loser. And God says, I didn't create you to be a loser. I created you to be a winner. You're a winner. And you'll never progress in the Christian. You'll never find fulfillment in your life as a Christian unless you realize, I'm a winner. I'm a winner, not because you repeat it over and over again, but because your folks just realize I'm forgiven. I'm a child of God. God's given me a purpose to live my life. God's a forgiving God. And God gives me a new start, a fresh start, a new beginning. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This is a new day, a new start. Victory, maybe for some of us, it's a victory day. And so we see here, he's said, I've got to put some things behind in my past. And so he says, press, mark, prize, and high calling. In that one verse, we see four terms that represent the key to finding the winning mindset in our life. Press, mark, prize, and high calling. Press means to expend maximum sustained effort. As a pastor, I continually see good Christian people failing in their relationships, failing in their finances, failing in their careers, and there's only two reasons for that kind of failure in their life. Number one is just misdirection. In order to be a winner, you've got to press toward a particular mark. You can strive for a mark, but it's not the right finish line. Uh, you can strive for a goal, but it's not the right goal. So there's misinformation. But the second reason why we fail, the most common reason, is because believers lose uh, because uh, they fail to press at all. They fail to put out any effort. See, it takes work to have a winning mindset. The natural way is to be lazy. We, by nature, we're lazy. We live in a lazy culture. We live in a lazy culture. I, I heard this statement uh, said recently by a, um, an old football coach. He said this. <clears throat> I don't know the accuracy of it, but I, I would certainly, I can see some of the simil similarities that go with it. He says, for every one baby boomer, it takes 100 millennials with the same mindset and determination and, and commitment to accomplish what one baby boomer can do versus 100 millennials. We could take maybe 100 millennials and go all the way back to those World War II veterans. And boy, every generation, what are we doing? We're losing that determination. We're losing that winning mindset. We're losing that. Listen, we're in this thing to win it. We're in this thing to go forward. We're in this thing. Listen, if I'm going to become a child of God, I'm going to realize there's a commitment I've got to make and I'm going to be successful when I do and I understand I can't be a success in my own power, in my own strength. I've got to have God's power. But I'm entering this thing with a mindset. I'm not just going to put, say a prayer and go through the motions. I want to get in this thing to live for God, to serve God with my life. I want to have a mindset that wins in God and doesn't just sort of go through the formality. Okay, I did what I'm supposed to do, and I'm just going to sort of coast in my life. And so we see that that pressing is in the present tense. It emphasizes a lifelong commitment that's gripped and guided uh, by that sold-out servant of God. To press speaks of an intensity of effort leading to a pursuit which of earnestness and diligence in order uh, to obtain. Non-winners don't press. They routine, routine, uh, routinely fail to make maximum effort to reach a goal. They get tired. They throw in the towel. It's not worth it. It's too hard. I've got blisters. I've got a sore. I just can't make it. There's no determination. There's no commitment. There's no uh, dedication to go forward. There's no winning mindset. And the great winners of life in all spectrums of life, business, sports, whatever it is, it's someone that realized there was effort to put forth. No one just sort of coached to be a winner. There was effort and determination and work that went into it. Notice that next word, the word mark. Mark marks the sport important of the goal, the direction that you're going. I press toward that prize. And that prize, the Bible says, is a high calling in Christ Jesus. And so the prize of the motivation is a high calling of God. What is 
that high calling of God. Go back, if you would, and uh, in Philippians here, and go back to look at verse, uh, verse, number, uh, verse number 8. Verse number 8 of chapter 3. Verse number 8, chapter 3. The Bible says, uh, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may what? Win Christ. He says, the prize I'm going after is I want to win Christ. I want to know Him. He says, in everything that the world has to offer that I've experienced in life, He says, all but dung. The word dung just means manure. He says, everything that the world said would bring happiness, fulfillment, satisfaction, uh, make me feel complete as an individual, it was all manure. Because when I won Christ, uh, the relationship I have with Christ, look at the next verse, verse number uh, 9. Uh, the Bible says, and, he, and be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Paul says, I'm not going to heaven because of any righteousness that I've done. I'm going to heaven because of my faith in His righteousness. And the more I know Him, the more righteous I realize He is, and the more unrighteous I realize I am. And then look at the last verse, verse 10. It says, that I may, Paul said, that I may know Him, the power of His resurrection, and the fellowship of His suffering, being made conformable, conformable uh, unto His death. He says, boy, I want to know him. And the, the journey he's on, the winning mindset is not to get what the world says will bring happiness. The winning mindset says the mark, the prize, the high calling is to know God. It's to know God. And the more you know God by coming to church, by reading your Bible, by spending time in the Word of God, the more you get to know God, the more you'll have a winning mindset. Because God's a winner. God's a winner. And Christ came and gave us victory. He gave us the win. And he wants us to live in victory. He wants us to live with a winning mindset. And so as a parent, you look at your kids as a winning parent. We're going we're gonna to raise these kids for God. And we're going to raise these kids to serve God, have a heart for God. You go in it with a winning mindset. Oh, I don't know if we can do it. I don't know if we can do it. It's going to be real tough. I know you're going in with a winning mindset. We're going to do this thing. Your marriage. We're going to have a great marriage. It's going to be a great relationship. Well, it's going to be rough. It's going to be great. I don't know. It's going to be tough. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. You go into it with that winning mindset. Now, is it half full or half empty? I don't know. It's based on your perspective. But you can say, we're going to have a winning mindset. We're going to have a winning mindset. As a Christian, tonight, not this morning, I'm done. God says, this one thing I do, what is it? Forget the past. Forget the past. Quit allowing your yesterday to dictate your today. You're a winner in Christ. I don't care what you tell yourself. I don't care what you tell yourself. Oh, I'm no good. I'm a loser. I'm a this. Yeah, and you keep telling yourself that, you'll start believing it. That'll be your mindset. Why? It's the most dominant thought you have at that given moment. And if you're always telling yourself how bad you are and you're a loser and you're this, that's your dominant thought. That's going to be your mindset. But if you're saying, with God's help, we're going to do this thing. And it's not a pride, and it's not arrogance, and it's, oh, I'm great, I'm this and that. It's just with God's help, with a humble spirit, saying, you know what? God's going to do something this year in my life, and God's going to accomplish something this year in my life. And I'm going to have a winning mindset. Honey, we're gonna, we're, we've got a great marriage. We've got some things we're working on. We've got some things we need to improve on. But we've got a great life, and we've got a great God, and uh, it's going to be a great year. And then we're going to see God do some great, wonderful things this year in our life. It's a winning mind. And a wife needs a husband that has a winning mindset. A husband needs a wife that has a winning mindset. Kids need a parent that have a winning mindset. You can do it. Boy, my dad was one thing. He was an encourager. He was an encourager. And uh, uh, he would get on me when I dogged it. He would get on me as a coach, you know, and, uh, when I was lazy. And he'd let me have it. But, boy, he, he would encourage me. You did your best? Yeah, all right. Now, I'm not going to get mad at you doing your best. Now, if you dogged it, if you could have done better, if you could have worked hard, if you could have labored, then, yeah, I'm going to get on you. But if you did your best, that's all. You did good. Good job. Good job. And God says, listen, I want you to just do your best. If you're going to run, if you're going to live the Christian life, then let's, let's live it. Let's live the life as though we're going to be the best we can be. If we're going to do this thing, we might as well be the best Christian we can be. 
We might as well strive to be the best Christian we can ever be and finish the line first. And so, as that person I talked to that, that stirred the idea for this message and said, Pastor, it's not if. It's not if I get saved. It's when I get saved. It's when I get saved. I just need to know that this is a commitment I'm making. And I want to make sure that the commitment I make, that I'm ready to hit this thing running. I'm ready to hit this thing going. Because what I do, I'm going to, I'm going to, with God's help, not in your own strength and power, but with God's help, I'm going to be the best Christian I can be. I'm going to be the best husband I can be. I'm going to be the best wife I can be. I'm going to be the best dad I can be. I'm going to be the best mom I can be. I'm going to be the best servant. I'm going to be the best I can be. No, not because I'm going to be the one doing it. I'm going to need God to do it. But I like that idea because that gives me a winning mindset that says, well, give that to all of us. If we're going to live this Christian life, let's be the best Christian you can be. If you're going to go to the trouble, you know, let, let's at least go to the trouble. Let's try to, be the, let's try to win. If we're going to be on a team and work out and practice and work out, then let's, let's play to win. Now, we may not win, but let's play to win. And let's have that winning mindset that we're going to win and excel at winning. But I'm sure, Brother Wong, you've seen over the years of your playing of soccer and coaching soccer and refereeing soccer, you've seen the mindset of the generations have begun to change. And, and that winning mindset makes a difference between an excellent athlete and just a mediocre athlete. Because the excellent athlete, man, they want to win. And they motivate the other team to win. And they get in there and they're diving and sliding and doing everything they can to win. Let's have that mindset. If you're married, let's have a winning marriage. If you're a parent, let's have a winning parenting. If you're a Christian, let's be a winning Christian. And if you live in this world, let's be a winner in this world. Father, we thank you this morning for the truths that we can learn from your word.